American Southwest, a sacred figure emerges that predates even the earliest of cultures and directly assimilates into the culture of the Hopi tribe amongst other Kachinas. First depicted in petroglyphs and culturally carried by Native American belief and apart from the establishment of the squatter man, this figure is the only other anthropomorphic petroglyph to receive such stylization. And this is a clue that Coco Pelli signified something positive. There is widespread belief that Coco Pelli's sack contained the seeds of all the plants and flowers of the world, which he scattered every spring, and he is also linked with childbirth. And this is a great clue that the appearance of the mysterious flute player may have signified new beginnings or the new cycle, as Earth's place in the solar cycle may have been jolted. Evidenced by a huge number of ancient artifacts, it is clear that Coco Pelli was important to many ancient observers all of them probably, and these ancient observers recreated his image all across the entire southwest and even beyond. They documented the effects of the torus field again and again all across the earth. A message from the ancients that a squatter man appeared to them, and from these thoughts, beings with wings, hammers, lightning and tridents dominated their sky. The manifestation of plasmatic auroras takes place in the solar system. The planets waged war. To the ancient observers, these gods were literally the planets, and the squatter man manifests from this solar system wide event. When Anthony Peratt presented his plasma theory for the petroglyphs being a torus field, represented by the ancients who saw these things in the sky, he had assumed that the students at his lecture already knew who Coco Pelli was to the ancients. They didn't. And we believe this should be common knowledge. The mystical flute player observed across great distances. This is how they saw it in the sky. And Dr. Anthony Peratt recreated in laboratory conditions the cult Coco Pelli figure manifesting in plasmatic discharges. Wait till you hear this. Uh, one cannot talk about Petra. Has, has everybody heard of Coco Pelli? No. Has anybody heard of Coco Pelli? Okay. Okay, wall sort of Coco Pelli. <laughs> okay, a, a, a Coco Pelli is a, is a is a very popular folk figure in uh, places like uh, New Mexico, Arizona, the southwestern United States, um, also in places uh, places like Afghanistan and uh, other places around the world. It, it's he's generally considered a, a mischievous. Africa, uh, a mischievous uh, sort of uh, figure playing a flute. And it may be, it may be a flute. It may be something else. It depends on the how the and culture interpreted what they saw in the synchrotron light in the very bright aurora coming into the sky. Here's the plasma images of the flute playing figure, and this is uh, this is from the American Southwest. Here, many different styles. Again, playing the flute. Southwest. This is Af Africa playing the flute. Colombia, well that might be a flute, I don't know. Uh, this again, uh, this is from the southwest because of the duck head which often appears. This is in Russia, uh, Siberia, is very, Siberia is very rich in petroglyphs. And uh, Sri Lanka, uh, something, something similar interpreted by, by their culture. <clears throat> of course, jazzy looking flute players weren't around when Coco Pelli was first conceived and artistically rendered. As shown in Dr. Peratt's lecture, these are modern day perceptions, modern observers trying to place a pattern based on current activities. But this ancient perception is a vital clue in the understanding of the squatter man dominating the skyline all over our planet Earth. It's part of the pattern of discrete phases when the planets went aurorally plasmatic. As you can see, the ancient perceptions see Coco Pelli as part of the manifestation. The flute seems to be a connection between the planets, and the reaching across space and time to dominate this scene was observed in the Taurus Field manifestation. Across culture and civilization, the mystery figure appears elsewhere, probably everywhere. The Maya civilization assimilate their thoughts collectively like the Hopi, but their variations differ slightly in what the observations and the manifestation meant to them. To the Maya observer, Coco Pelli blew a dart towards the top of the Tree of Life, where the Thunderbird sat perched aloft. Watching the world, 
the tree becomes a squatter man. Vukub Kakwix, possibly meaning Seven Macaw, is the name of a bird demon defeated by the hero twins in a Kishmaya myth preserved in an 18th century document. This document, famously titled Popol Vuh, and this episode of the demon's defeat was already known in the late pre-classic period, and this was before the year 200 AD. He was also the father of Zipakana, an underworld demon deity, and Kabrakin, the earthquake god. Vukub Kakwix is described as a powerful bird pretending to be the sun and moon of the twilight world, in between the former creation and this present one. According to the modern quiche, his name refers to the seven stars of the Big Dipper asterism. The false sun moon bird was shot out his tree with a blowgun by Unapu, one of the Maya hero twins and a direct representation of Coco Pelle, still managing to sever Coco Pelle's arm. Finally, however, the demon was deprived of his teeth, his eyes, his riches, and his power, and together the twins were to become the new sun and moon of the present creation. The episode is only loosely connected to the main tale of the twins, and it's varied by other Mesoamerican hero myths, but clear to the Maya in relation to the Hopi that the figure signified a new. Coco Pelle is celebrated for many reasons, but to the modern day researcher, he's simply a mysterious figure from the most ancient times of the petroglyph documentation, but from the oral stories that reach us today, it tells us that some sort of sound emanated from this manifestation. Hence that idea of him being a flute player, baby maker, seducer, and good luck symbol for Hunter's Kachina. In ancient Indian legend, Coco Pelle was a symbol of happiness and joy. He talked to the wind and the sky, and his music could be heard in the spring breeze, bringing a warmth after the cold winter. Hopi legend tells us that upon their entrance onto this, the fourth world, the Hopi people were met by an eagle who shot an arrow into the two Mahus and the Mahus were insects which carried the power of heat, and they immediately began playing such uplifting melodies on their flutes that they healed their own pierced bodies. The Hopi then began their separate migrations, and each Mahu would scatter the seeds of fruits and vegetables onto the barren land. Over them, each played his flute to bring warmth and to make the seeds grow. His name, Coco for wood and Pele for hump, which was the bag of seeds he always carried, was given to him on his long journey. It is said that he draws the heat from the centre of the earth, that he has come down to us as the loving spirit of fertility of the earth and humanity, according to the Hopi. Is the eagle shooting an arrow into the Mahus a cosmic event? A comet or some sort of debris interacting with Venus, Mars, Saturn and the earth? And perhaps the Coco Pelle figure represents the break in the squatter man that later restores order on the planet Earth, but in a different solar cycle. The so-called flute or dart and the body represent plasmatic connections between the planets, and his wild jazzy hair could actually be the dying embers of an ancient sun. The ancient second sun. But this is complete conjecture of course, and nowhere does it say that an understanding exists to testify to this wild notion. These are simply thoughts manifesting in my own mind, but they also represent a formulation of truth, of which the wild notions we have today about the ancient past is far more than complete conjecture, but in fact, the greatest lie ever told, and we, all of us, throughout every sociable culture, are the victims. But the echoes remain, and these echoes are now being noticed. It is clear that the petroglyphs are showing us that this figure was not a trader who walked the earth, but rather a manifestation in space of plasmatic aurora instabilities visible all over the planet earth during the cataclysmic squatter man event. And this is unmistakable. We may not know exactly what it is, how it occurred, but we do know that based on plasma physicist Anthony Peratt's groundbreaking research, that petroglyphs are related to a Taurus stack manifested in our solar system. They're trying to tell you a story here. At the top, the Divine Council. Perfect and beautiful. Under that, the Council emitting the Cosmic Mountain. 
pyramidal for a time. Progressing further under that. Becoming Toroidal, that original tenant goddess with the two. Snapshots. Becoming the Taurus Vera, the human form under the council and with the two. cosmic dragon. Pashupati is an incarnation of the Hindu god Shiva as lord of the animals. Master of animals. Simplified in the Egyptian art. Both Shiva and Rudra are viewed as the same personality in Hindu scriptures. That atmospheric deity with fearsome powers. The ancient Greek texts of the time of Alexander the Great call Shiva as Indian Dionysus, or alternatively call Dionysus as God of the Orient. And Dionysus had many names. He of the trees, he in the tree. What tree? The tree of life. different systems merge with the concept of the human body as a pillar between heaven and earth. That human form takes the place of the tree. The tree of life becomes the torus field, the human form with the two. clarify something. In my opinion, these two pesky dots here are separate from the other features I refer to as the two. The human form under the divine assembly with the two. Taurus field standing on top of the earth in the north. This is why these people have these rituals with their trees and effigies. Let's take a look at 
some more snapshots. Try to understand the evolution of what that divine council presented. This, this is that destructive dance of Shiva. This is those avatars of Vishnu. The hourglass-shaped cosmic mountain. Oscillating torus field. Goddess with the two under the Divine Council. Whoever you want to call it Eve, Diana, Artemis, Aphrodite, Ishtar, Inanna, Asherah. They're all a Taurus fill under the council with the two. The squatter man, flanked at either side by the two and treading on the beasts of the earth, we can't be sure where Coco Pelly emerges here, but he somehow becomes part of the squatter man manifestation and brings hope and rebirth to the ancient observers who witnessed it. As you guys know, the squatter man project is in collaboration with Kronos. A great friend of ours who knows everything there is to know about the Squatter Man event. And we are now at over 50 videos in the project here in the Lost History channel. But Kronos has his own captivating collection of videos that opens your eyes to the truth. In fact, it's a case that when you see this truth, you can't unsee it. And that is the effect of the Squatter Man. And I highly recommend that you check out his content. That is always linked in the description boxes of this channel, such as the respect that we hold for this man who has spent over 8 years researching the squatter man in depth. And in the words of Kronos, Being raised as Christians as we were, we do not lose hope, we gain understanding. We gain an absolutely stunning realisation of the creative force of the universe, an understanding that we are the culmination of that force. The all, the universe, looking back at itself. Every living creature in every galaxy is an I, a form of the all, a result of the creative force and no search to find it is necessary, for you are it. We are all the universe, we all are the eyes of the place we inhabit. Coco Pelli is a meaning lost, something profound that assimilates over time, but the petroglyphs are unmistakable, wouldn't you agree? We may not have all the answers guys, but for now, at least we do have the questions, and we intend to ask these questions until we are blue in the face. But what do you guys think about Coco Pelli anyway? Comments below, and as always, thank you for watching.